in today's video, we're going to learn a markup chain called a uh, branching process. This is also known as uh, oops, um, Galton Olson uh, process. It has lots of uh, applications. Um, the one I can think of is the modeling of uh, um, the effectiveness of uh, a chemotherapy for uh, cancer patients. And uh, um, so uh, let's introduce the setting. So we consider um, a population of uh, certain individuals and we have the following setting the first one is all individuals have the same uh, lifetime I mean, this number is fixed. This is uh, not a random number, all right? And uh, the randomness is uh, we assume each individual will produce a random number of offsprings uh, at the end of his lifetime. What happens is, uh, suppose, uh, let's look at uh, some example. Uh, we can start, for example, this may be a single cell, and uh, this is uh, n equals zero. And at its end of its lifetime, um, it produces uh, two offspring. And because of uh, uh, these two uh, offspring at uh, n equals 1, they have the same uh, lifetime. Uh, for example, the first one might, say, uh, produce no offspring. Uh, what happens is uh, there is nothing. And then the, sec uh, the second one, let's say, it produces a uh, uh, one offspring, and this is uh, n equals uh, two. And uh, um, for this one, when n equals three, um, this one may have uh, no offspring. So and uh, and then uh, like uh, our mark of uh, chain enters what we have an absorbing state because there is no individual. Uh, to produce any offspring, so we're staying at uh, um, this state forever. Here, x zero is one, x one is two, and x two is one, and x three is zero, and we stay here forever. Here, our x is standing for the size of the population at uh, time n. And uh, our zeros generation is like initially uh, 
how many individuals we have. And furthermore, um, we have this randomness, which is uh, um, right here. Uh, each individual will produce a random number of offspring at the end of its lifetime. Moreover, we assume each individual, um, the offspring, the distribution uh, of the offspring, uh, an individual can produce is an IID distribution. Now we say if um, given that uh, x sub m minus 1 is k, this is like uh, the population of previous generation, and x sub n is our current generation that we are interested in. And now uh, these k individuals, let's assume For i, that is uh, from 1 to k, and zi is the number of uh, offsprings each individual uh, in m minus one generation uh, will produce and then zi is independent and identically distributed with the following uh, distribution that is we assume uh, zi equals j is a constant number p sub j uh, for any uh, j is greater than or equal to zero. Um, this means the number of uh, offspring of the ith individual is uh, equal to j. And in previous, previously, um, we say if we have a zeroth individual, which is if we have uh, no individual left, and what happens is uh, we have this probability of uh, zi is 0 equals uh, p sub 0. And think about this. Um, if we have a 0 population at the n minus 1 generation, there will be no uh, offspring at the n generation. And what happens is we stay here forever, and this is a recurrent state. So zero is a recurrent state, and uh, it means p zero zero is uh, one. The notation might be a little bit confusing um, because in textbook it uses both capital P for this. What I want to emphasize is uh, this is a transition probability, all right? Um, this is a uh, n minus one generations population, and this zero is nth generations population. And what happens here is it's easy to um, have the following conclusion that is given x um, m minus 1 is k and if we want to compute 
xn is 0. This is like the probability of uh, all k individuals have no offspring. And because of the independent identically distributed property and uh, we reach the conclusion uh, this is uh, just p0 raised to the kth power. Hence, because of this uh, transition probability, uh, by the way, this is nothing but uh, uh, p0. I'm sorry, uh, this is uh, pk0, that is from state k, uh, we transit to state 0. Now if p0 uh, is greater than 0, this means p0 raised to the kth power is greater than 0 for any fixed k. And what happens is, this means uh, from any state, from any state k, we have a non-zero probability to transit to an absorbing state. And I want to emphasize it's a recurrent state and also an absorbing state. This actually implies um, all states are other than um, zero or transit because they all have a non zero probability to transit into this absorbing uh, recurrent state. And now um, we would like to consider um, the limiting behavior of this uh, branching process. Uh, all we would like to do is we assume um, we let mu, which is the expectation of zi. And uh, it is uh, defined by, so basically we sum up um, all the possible j and uh, times the probability of this individual uh, produces uh, j offspring. So this is a probability uh, to have j offspring. And uh, um, this is a number of offsprings. All right. This is nothing but uh, uh, the average number of the offsprings of a uh, um, single individual. This is mean number of offspring of a single individual. And now um, we're curious of um, what happens to uh, the expectation of the nth generation. All right. And we let the zeroth generation is one. And we're curious how do we compute uh, this nth generation. 
And here we'll use uh, a trick we learned in the previous class, uh, which is called a uh, conditional. Um, we compute the expectation by conditioning on previous uh, xn sub minus 1. And this is an uh, expectation of the expectation of x sub n given x sub m minus 1. Okay. And here I would like to emphasize uh, one thing. That is, uh, uh, the inner, the inner um, expectation is uh, given the previous generation, which is uh, m minus one, and we compute the expectation expected value of. Uh, of the next generation, let's say xn, and the outer, all right, and the outer expectation is uh, this one is with respect to uh, x sub uh, m minus one, all right. And now uh, it's computed. So what I uh, what I would like to uh, do here is. Uh, we consider instead of uh, directly compute this, we consider what happens if uh, we assume the m minus uh, n m minus one generation has population of k. All right, and we know that. Uh, because we have uh, k individuals, so and each of them will produce um, zi offsprings, and this i is from uh, one to k. So what happens is. Uh, This is uh, uh, k times the expected value of uh, zi. This is by linearity of the expected value. And this is k, then is k times mu. Back to the original um, expectation. Uh, we want to compute for the nth generation. This is the sum i from 1 to a random number. Because at the n uh, minus one generation, we have a uh, um, the population being x sub uh, n minus one. This one is random. I want to emphasize that, and which means we have a variable length sum, which we have to use um, this trick right here to compute, and now. Let's write down the inner expectation. Because let's look at uh, the formula right here. When x sub uh, m minus 1, the n minus 1's generation population is k, k appears here, which means um, without the k, okay, we just write down x sub m minus 1, this expectation is uh, x sub m minus 1 times mu. And keep this in mind, mu is a constant, all right? So mu is a constant, uh, so we can pull mu out of this expectation, and we have, uh, this is uh, x sub m minus 1. And using the same logic, okay, and we have this as a mu square times expectation of uh, x sub m. Iterating procedure goes on and on. We can have this is nothing but uh, 
uh, mu to the nth power times the expectation of x0. But uh, x0 is, uh, this is, uh, x0 is assumed to be 1, this is uh, like a non-random. So its expectation is, is the same as its value, which is 1. Um, the conclusion, which the conclusion is uh, xn, which is a population of nth generations, uh, expectation is uh, mu to the nth power. And apparently, uh, we can have several cases. Um, this is uh, the mu is between 0 and 1. All right. Um, this is like uh, an individual. has, on average, less than one uh, offsprings. And the other is like the critical case, which is mu equals one. Um, we won't analyze this case in our class. Uh, it uses our martingale property and uh, uh, generating functions. So we'll skip that. And the other case is when mu is greater than one. And uh, uh, so we'll analyze these three cases in the next video.